time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our lives, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey. Hey everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live. Friday, September 27th, S&P down 7, NASDAQ down 106, Russell up 15, Dow up 152, gold down almost 1%, silver down 1.5%, notes and bonds green, 10-year yield down 1%, oil up 1%, natty gas up 5.5, soybeans up 2.5, corn up 1, wheat down 1, Euro and the pound a little bit red, Bitcoin up a little over one and a half percent, and the VIX up about five and a half percent, sitting at 16.2. Contracting a little bit with this bounce, peaked its head above, well, up to about 16.6. VIX was rising above highs of day before SPX cracked through lows of day. As if it saw it coming, my friends. If it as if it saw it coming. Uh, my big trades have gotten big slap today. Three uh, three double stops, so down about twenty eight hundred on those currently. With uh, one more tranche to enter here in a couple minutes. My um, my price action bix have done well, so these are just. Ones I'm entering based on price action, and then I'm scaling out uh, up about 1300 on those. Uh, I took a directional VRR bearish in NDX, closed one of them out. The other one's up uh, about five, a little over 500 currently. Let's see if we get any more down movement. I may just close this one out as well. I uh, had a nice morning day trading a couple stocks specifically microsoft got a nice downside runner in microsoft and that is about it i took off a es hedgehog early just because i did not see any value in the in the risk remaining versus the the potential reward so i closed that out at 14 days instead of waiting till under seven and I think that is it. I've got my, I've got that MU broken wing butterfly is starting to come back down into the, I, I closed three of the seven out for a nice profit, left these remaining four on. It's right on the edge. If we get some more down movement, we'll be able to book some profits. If not, book a little bit. That Costco earnings fly from yesterday is going to be a loser. And um, I think that's it. Chad, how's your day? Not too bad. I just, um, it was a little up and down, kind of like the markets were. Um, let's see here. My 1DT, I booked pretty quick, 25%, closed half. Uh, I started getting those down moves. I ended up closing it out. So I booked 1300 on that. My AM number one, uh, I took this as I was posting in my channel. I've never done this before, but because there's been a lot of times in the last month where I've been stopped and then there was an immediate reversal as I was nearing my stop because price had kind of been in a tight range for most of the day, but I took it off and the kind of was just going to manually close it if it got out of whack. Um, ended up bouncing. I, I was within 10 cents before the drop of getting booking 20%. Then it, it would have stopped it out, but I took it off. It, it went past it by like 30 or 40 cents, something like that. Not very much. 
you know, probably what normal slippage would be, but it bounced back immediately. Like I thought it might, it got to within 20 cents of booking 20% and then it dropped again. <laughs> and so I ended up closing it out uh, just for a little bit. Uh, I think my stop was 860. I closed it for 820. So it was close to a, I did get some value on my puts 80 cents. Um, but, uh, uh, so that, that was a loser. Uh, not quite a full loser. Pretty close. Um, AM number two, book 20%, and then uh, on that big down move, got stopped. So that was a pretty much a scratch trade. Um, lunchtime number one was a 20, 40, 60 and out. And then lunchtime two, 20%, then stopped. So... Um, plus nine ninety five. It's a little under a grand in TLC trades, but up twenty two ninety five if you include my one DTE. So, and uh, so no no power hour trades on at the moment. So that's where I'm at. I did put an early Wuga on, which is right back to center, and then my OG Wuga is out of range so i need i need below 43 basically to break even it's right on the it's right there between the two of them what a bounce See my calls. That stopped out of one side of my BIX here. Okay. Uh, Dark Avenger. I'm doing all my normal DCs. I listed them in my in the uh, this morning in the positions and updates. Uh, Kelvin, if I scale, no, I won't scale down. I mean, now we're seeing some contraction too, so I like that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't really scale down much because of the little today's little vol pop. I mean, if VIX was up 10 or 15%, then I might step back a little bit. So I've already, I entered my 6.7 and my 5.7 a little bit early just to, just to spread them out. I'm just so, on Fridays, I'm so distracted by just doing my double calendar. So I'm going to spread them out a little bit. I made a, uh, I was just, I just getting off with support on toss. I made a mistake in my small account. So I put on an early Wooga and then I put on an OG, OG Wooga. Any guesses what I did? And I was put them on with the expectation to, uh, to let them run to expire. So any guesses what I what I accidentally did? Overlap strikes. That's why I use different brokers. <laughs> yep, and so it counts it, it counts as a day trade. Yeah, because it closed one of the calls, and so now I'm going to be restricted and won't be able to do that in this no real trade discount anymore, unless I bund it up to 25k. Yeah, I had I did my first one in trade here, and then I was going to be overlapping, so I had to switch over to toss for my OG. Yeah, so I have to wait. I have to wait ninety days, or I can, you know, fund it. But I, I've really enjoyed uh, 
um, you know, having it be around a 10 K account because it's just have to be ultra, um, you know, sticking to rules and things like that. Yeah. Well, I've or I, the whole day trading I, restriction is such a joke. Yeah. Dark Avenger. I already placed three day trades this week or in, it's in a five day period, five trading day period. So today I was planning on, I, I even went smaller. I only did like a couple contracts in each one because I was going to let them expire. And then when I did the OG one, I overlapped a strike and I missed, I didn't check it. Normally that's something I look at. So that's a bummer. I almost said something about that of why I didn't toss when I posted my two screenshots. Almost, almost said something to the effect of I had to do in a separate broker due to overlapping strikes, but I just. Yeah. And, you know, typically I like to have myself always have a cushion of having one trade, but um, yesterday I could have let mine go to expire, but I closed it. It went ended up being, it could have been a max profit, but I closed the one yesterday and that was my one that I had left. But it's almost more gratifying to me when I, you know, book, you know, if I'm if I'm risking a thousand bucks on like a you know a couple contracts of it, and, and I and I book a max profit on letting it expire or booking seventy five percent or fifty percent, like to me it's it's been real gratifying being able to slowly grow this account. Posted my four seven. Well, on this NDX, I don't know that we're getting another leg down. Trying to decide if I want to go ahead and book my profits here. I'll just close it. So that was the that was the one I posted in the Transformer channel. I posted it there because I had the option to transform it if I wanted, but I ended up just booking it.
meaning it's going for a good credit tomorrow. Gotcha. Yeah. They act like some turkeys, huh? Turkeys just trotting down the road, huh? Those look like little, those look like uh, mommies. I like to, I like daddies. Got these, got these on my camera just yesterday. That one looks like it's looking at the camera. Yeah, five got five five big gobblers. We, it's waiting for us for next spring. Yeah, you can hunt fall turkeys, but I'm usually deer hunting in the fall. They don't gobble in the fall, so it's hard to find them. Spring is when they gobble. We got one trading day in September after today. Um, is that right? Yeah, Monday's uh, yeah, Monday's the thirtieth, and then Tuesday's the first. So a thirty-five pin would be my ideal spot for a wooga for my two woogas. Yeah, my uh, my two woogas are all wonky now since I closed out one the uh, since I accidentally closed out the uh, what was that? One of the calls. I don't even know which one it was. Fifty seven thirty five.
All right, just posted my three six. This is what my this is what my two woogas look like now. Uh, yeah, there's nothing optimized on my entry times. I'm just spreading them out a little bit instead of loading them all up closer together, Chris. So the times are not optimized based on what the back test says by any means. As far as econ news next week, we've got uh, Jerome hitting the mic at noon on Monday due to participate in a moderated discussion titled A View from the Federal Reserve Board at the National Association for Business Economics Annual Meeting in Nashville, Tennessee. Tuesday, pre-market, or actually 30 minutes after the market opens, uh, ISM manufacturing and jolts. And then a few uh, FOMC members, Bostic, Cook. Oh, those are the only ones during the day, I guess. So 10 a.m., Bostic and Cook. Wednesday, ADP non farm uh, employment change pre market. We've got a couple FOMC members, Hammock. Moose Salem, Bowman, and Barkin. Thursday, pre-market unemployment claims. 30 minutes after the market, ISM services PMI. And then Friday, employment data pre-market. And uh, Williams speaking 30 minutes before the market opens. What's interesting is, I mean, I know employment data is important with Everything going on with interest rates, but look at the uh, look at the options on Friday. We're trading an implied volatility of fourteen point three versus like Thursday's twelve point one two. So for whatever reason, they are they are a little pumped on Friday. Unless there's something else I'm not aware of. Well, hopefully the uh, air doesn't come out of the tire on Friday's options when after Jerome speaks, because that would not be good for our Friday longs.
I'm going to get fill in my four five. SPX back to hugging that 45 level that it loved so much yesterday. It's been chopping around at a bunch today too. Yeah, they are definitely Jake. And that's because of that volatility I was just talking about on Fridays pumped. So you're buying your longs on a day when implied volatility is juiced. Versus the front week, which is not as juiced. Posted my four or five. Got a three seven and a three five left. Just posted my weekly results for TLC and one DTE. This was the first week I traded one DTE every day. All winners. Let's see. So your total for the week, a little over 20K. Nice. Yep. One DTE is really had good, great theta decay the first first hour of the day. Yeah, I did a uh, one DTE this morning as well. I took uh, half of it and I transformed into an, a risk free upside vertical for Monday, and then I just booked profits on the other half of it. My early Wooga looked like it was dead right off the bat. Now it's dead center. So you have to, Moel, you got to adjust. Yeah. So what you do is
So Moel, can you see my screen? So right here on days to expiration, I put target, you're targeting one day and then um, make sure I'm explaining this correctly. So this is, this is the range. So the target is one DTE, but it'll go up to four DTE if, if the one DTE is not available. And so that'll, that'll catch your um, Monday options on a Friday. Yeah. You don't need a separate bot. And I have it as four because if there's a holiday, like a holiday, um, you know, Friday or holiday Monday, it'll, it'll, it'll get through that as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, on the 2 DTE I have a I have a separate bot for Friday. I haven't been doing any 2 DTEs. Sounds like a good feature request, Elliot. Get in there. Yeah, that would be nice. There you go. <clears throat> so you do it on all the strikes. Target 114. Coming back into range for the double Wooga. Three seven is posted.
So all I have left is my three five. Do that here in a bit. Not mine. Mine's been one of the best. Early Wooga's at You know, Krish, I think I did adjust mine to give it a little bit later exit time. Yeah, look at the most, always go to the link in the trade plan, in the calendar trade plans. It's going to be mm -hmm. your most up-to-date one. So I'll, I'll t I tweak things from time to time. Chad, that straddle's calling your name, 40 straddle. Yeah, I mean, the price action looks pretty good. About a six-point expected move. I became just extremely distracted after the whole uh, double wooga thing and Getting off with support, my mind just wasn't in a spot where I was like, okay, I'm just not going to place any other trades today. <clears throat> and trust me, I'm going to contact them on Monday and see if they actually recognize, see if a new person recognizes it. Because when you like look at it in your trade history, like it doesn't look like you've closed a trade. It just looks like this. Well, if, but if you look at the individual legs, yeah, it should that's, say, you know, sell to open, buy to close or whatever. Yeah. So, but it, it, you look at it like this. So it's like, okay, obviously on the 25th, obviously opened at 405, closed, closed at 215. And then you got these two other trades. Yeah. There's no closing on those. They just expired. See what I'm saying? I mean, they'll probably. They, but look at probably, your but look at that fifty-seven forty-five leg in today's order. It's got to close. That's what they're gonna say. Yeah, no, I know. I, I'm sure they'll catch it, but maybe you might be able to plead your case. I'll at least try. Because literally, I have to contact them almost two or three times a week. 
still because the, count, the counter has been off so for so many for so long they they never fix that huh no like it's always off hmm. so at like first glance it looks like oh yeah you know you didn't there's no closing order um other than i see that one yeah where it says minus one to close i see it in the I'm sure they'll catch it, but I'll, I'll at least try it. The 45 butterfly trading for a buck 50 ish with 25 minutes to go. Uh oh. Got a fire alarm going off in here. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, I heard that. Oh, geez. They're evacuating my office building. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm thinking about it, Moel. All right. I'm going to, I got to go check this out. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I know it's a regulatory rule, Dark Avenger. I just thought maybe they might. You know, one of those customer service people may just not notice that the one says to close. I mean, worst case scenario is they just continue to say, yeah, it's this is what happened. Well, hopefully I can get uh, at least this little quant this wonky thing I've got going on. Maybe I can book some profits from it today. Anyway, it's currently currently up fourteen percent. Uh, stay below what fifty seven forty five is what it needs to stay below. The early Wooga is up 45%. So if I just would have not even messed around with a second Wooga, I'd have been up 45% and not having to worry about it.
Yeah, the 40 or the 45 straddle would be sitting pretty good right now. Like the price just to stay right at 40. Finish there. Coming down a little bit. It's... it's definitely helping the second part of my Wooga. Vic's coming up a little bit, though. It's coming up to highs of day, so I really don't want to see this flush. Yeah, Vic's coming up through highs of day now. It likes that 5740, though. Even with the VIX coming up, it's kind of resisting going below it for, for the moment. <laughs> See, he's got sirens blasting. All right, so Vic's still going up.
looks like it wants to come down. It's trying to resist. Definitely likes that 40. Let's see if it can get back up to it. Coming down, Vic's still going up. I mean, 35 and 40 would be a pin for my wonky wooga. Woo! Sirens just went off. That was up there. There may be a fire, but I don't really know. <laughs> Forty butterflies trading for buck sixty. MOC in two minutes. I'm gonna start getting my flies working. All right, working in the 35s and 40s.
Yeah, this is interesting. The VIX is trying to tell us something. Hmm. Yeah, I've been going straight up now for 30 minutes. Four, seven, five, seven, six, seven, all up about six or seven percent already. Hopefully we get a little movement after we get filled with Mahomes. Five hundred and forty million sell side. Forty butterflies look like they're around a buck eighty. Maybe a little higher. Hold on, let's fill it forty before you move on. Looking 45s as well. Forties look like they should be filling. Filled on the forties. Bot filled on the forties as well. Well, we're getting more price action leading up than normal than we have the rest of the week. So hopefully we can make a five point move here. Thirty five pin would be ideal for my Wugas. But first, we need to move away from forty. Would love a pop to forty five, close at thirty five. That would make my day. I mean, if you're going to ask, you might as well ask for it all. You never know. You might just get it. I mean, with this VIX creeping, surely we get a five-point move.
for a second there. It looked like it was going to go down to lows of day. and It's popping back up. Five minutes. Been loving that 45 area. Let's go touch it. My three six is already up nine percent. Calendar's popping. They like that VIX. Back to 40 with three minutes to go. All right, no 45. Let's just go to 35. This is the two minute warning. Just sleeping on 40. One minute. Come on down. Come on down to the 35. Lock in my homes and pin a Wooga. Yeah, it looks like at least my Woogas are going to pin, even though it's going to be my last ones in this count for a while. A little more. A little more. Couple more points. You got it. You got it, little buddy. A little bit more. A 
little bit more below 37 at least. Ding, ding, ding. Wooga pin. Oh, bounced up a point. So Mahomes will be a little lost. Wooga will be good for about almost 2019, 80-ish. And my regular Bix, not so hot, about minus 2,700. My price action Bix, let's see, what did they settle in at? Plus 11, a little over 1,100. All right, all, that's a wrap. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. Uh, looking at the live stream schedule for next week. Chad will be streaming live in the morning, and then we'll be back for Power Hour. All right, all. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.